So far in our protector series, we have learned how to interact with inputs, buttons, alerts, frames, drop down, window handling, finding multiple elements, and so many things. We are going to take one more step and we are going to learn about the page object model. Page object model is mostly used in the testing. It is not restricted to Selenium, Protector, WebDriver, or any other framework. So basically, it's a design pattern that can be implemented in any of the testing sites. So the basic question, what is page object model and why we need this? Because so far we have written all our test script and we are able to execute them successfully. And of course we have done the positive as well as the negative scenarios. So what is the problem in the existing test script and what page object model is going to solve us? Before that, let us understand what is page object model. I know there are plenty of websites out there and plenty of YouTube videos as well. But I found this article very simple and very straightforward meaning without any junks. So it's very simple to understand that page object model also known as POM is a design pattern in Selenium or Protector or any of the testing framework that creates an object repository for storing all the web elements. It is useful in reducing the code duplication and also improves the test case maintenance. To be simple, in page object model, consider each web page of an application as a class file. Each class file will contain only corresponding web page elements. Using these elements, we can perform operations on the website under test. That's it, very simple. For example, in our previous whatever the code we have written, we almost write each and every web page elements within the same spec and then we call whatever the function we are going to do and we execute there itself. That is good for learning to understand the basic concept but in real time when we are going to perform any of the testing of course we cannot use this. Of course we can use this but that is again like hectic. For example let us assume that this particular website let code where we have this sign up module right and we have this login functionality. So if this name is going to change tomorrow, of course, I have to change in each and every spec file if I have written that individually. But in terms of page object model, I will write this sign up button only once or sign up link only once in a common repository. And from there, I will access wherever I need it. So the intention here is if there is any changes, and that should be reflected in all the test script you have in our protector, all the specs we have, it should get automatically changed. So that is the main motive of using this page object model framework. Somebody used to call it as a design pattern and somebody used to call it as a framework. For me personally, it's like a framework because we are going to write some of the reusable cons components based on the functionality we will call or we will use all the elements. I hope that makes sense to you. So we'll talk about it more in detail when we are going to code. Today, we are just going to learn the application and what is there, what we are going to automate, that is what we are going to discuss today. In our applications, we have so many modules, like we have this testing practice sites. So if I go inside this, we have this input and within that also we have so many fields. And similarly, we have so many things here, right? So we are not going to automate each and everything here because of course I cannot give all the stuff within the as in the format of video so just to make it very simple and make you understand the concept of page object model i'm just going to take two modules that's going to be my sign up page and of course i will include the positive as well as the negative test cases and another model is going to be your login page so we'll do the sign up where in the sign up also we have some of the positive and the negative checks and then once we signed up We'll take the same email ID and we will write the code for the login page, right? So just to give you a brief, like how this application is designed and how using the design concept, we can build our page object model. I just created a small mind map here just to make you understand in a better way. So this is our test application and it has two major components. One is the header and another one is the home page. And in the home page, we have four sections. One is the code, practice site, videos, and to do, which I haven't decided yet. And in the header part, we have those four sections the home let code icon. So once we click on that, it will from anywhere, it will take to our home page. 
and then we have this like text path page and we have the sign up and sign in. So we are going to focus on this two modules sign up and the sign in and in the sign up we have four fields basically the name, email, password and the term and conditions and of course other than that we have the sign up button. And in the sign in page we have the email and the password and of course the sign in button. So this is how we are going to design our class file. So within this project we will have header and home page. Just to give you the demo I will just create the classes but I will not write anything. As a homework or as an assignment maybe you can do it. You can upload your code into the github and you can share the links on the comments so that it will make me feel happy. So we're going to focus mainly on the sign in sign up page. This is going to be our, our one class on sign in page. This is going to be our second class and within the class of course we will write all the elements and based on this element we are going to write some of the functionality. I have taken one more step because some of you already working on the protector but without knowing you just walk or maybe you are coming from the manual testing background and you are starting from the scratch here. So I'm not sure about my audience or the subscriber. So that's the reason I have take one more step and I have prepared a, a test case sheet. And to be honest, you can write a better test case than me. I know that. But just for your understanding, to make it very simple, I have prepared this test case. And we'll talk about it eventually when we are going to implement all the codes in our page object model. That's it for the video. I hope you understood what is page object model and why we need this and also how we are going to implement in a brief. I hope you have enjoyed it and if so do let me know in the comments and if you have any queries please do reach out to me on the comments. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one very soon.